Bonjour, everyone. Good evening, everybody. Und für unsere deutschsprachigen Freunde, herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Episode von Journey to the Chateau. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Journey to the Chateau. I'm Patrick. And I'm Stuart. Today's episode is about Toile de Jouy. And if you don't know what it is, you will after you watch this. Have fun. In this episode, Stuart is going to actually create his own design of a toile. And you can see the different color variations after he has actually drawn the design. In the late 16th century, India was the largest producer of cotton textiles in the world. They used brightly colored patterns that were created with sophisticated block printing techniques. The dyes they used were vibrant and color fast, and they did not fade with their exposure to light. French wool and silk weavers saw the import of these colorful cotton chintz fabrics from India as a threat to their livelihood, so they petitioned the government to pass laws to forbid the import and wearing of these fabrics. Although this ban was put into effect in 1686, it was regularly ignored by citizens who were more concerned with fashion than law. As an example, here is a painting from 1724 by Jean-Francois de Troyes called The Declaration of Love. These type of paintings of fashionable society rejected religious or mythological subjects and instead represented the latest in clothing, etiquette, and interior decoration. You can see that the young woman is resting on a cushion that is most likely made from a chintz fabric from India. In another example, this is a portrait of Madame de Pompadour at her timbre frame, from around 1750 by Francois Hubert Drouet. Madame de Pompadour was the chief mistress of Louis XV from 1745 to 1751, and here she is wearing a gown made from a chintz fabric from India. The ban on the import of textiles from India continued for 73 years, until it was lifted in 1759 when French manufacturers had finally acquired the knowledge to produce their own colorfast versions of the printed Indian cotton. One of these French manufacturers was a 21-year-old Franco-German artisan named Christophe Philippe Oberkampf. His factory, located in a town near Versailles called jouy en josas was started in 1760. The term toile de jouy translates from French as cloth from jouy, but it is often just referred to as toile or jouy print. Oberkamp's factory in jouy was innovative in the new printing process. Initially, only block printing was used for making prints in multiple colors and in small motifs. Here are some examples of block printing from the jouy factory. In some of the Jouy block printed designs, the factory workers would manually have to apply additional colors. Here are examples of Jouy textiles with applied color. In this floral example of Lotus and Poppies from 1775, the Oberkamp factory has been able to fully create the manner of the earlier chintz fabrics from India. Some of the Jouy block prints had small patterns of dots referred to as picotage. This is a pattern that is created using a stipple method whereby brass pins were driven into the wooden printing blocks. They are used to create highlighted and shadow patterns on the fabric. This floral example from the Jouy factory in 1775 shows a motif that was typical of Chinese painted silks. The picotage pattern was used in the wood block to create a repeating serpentine band. Copper plate printing onto textiles was first developed in Ireland in 1752. The copper plates were much larger than the wood blocks, 
and the fine lines that could be used made it possible to print more sophisticated and naturalistic images onto fabric. By 1760, England had mastered the secret of colorfast copper plate printing on textiles. This furnishing fabric from 1769, of a hunting and fishing scene, was created by Robert Jones at his old Ford factory in London. The Jouy factory did not start using copper plate printing until the 1770s. This technique allowed the ability to create more detailed and large-sized motifs. Many of the patterns were monochrome, or printed in a single color, with colors such as black, red, or blue. This white or off-white cotton or linen fabric was usually printed with decorative and repeating floral, bucolic, or pastoral scenes. They would show different motifs, such as scenes from a farmer's daily life, to celebrations of traditions and other festivities. The narrative themes were sometimes centered around a specific event, like a royal visit, or the first balloon flight. Other themes included stories from mythology, the Bible, or popular works of literature. In 1783, the French painter and prolific designer Jean-Baptiste Huet was commissioned by Oberkampf to create a toile design celebrating that the factory at Chouy had been designated as a royal manufactory. Jean-Baptiste became well known for his detailed designs in both block and plate printing, and he continued to provide scenic vignettes as the major designer at Chouy, resulting in their most iconic toile de Chouy work. The textile patterns around 1800, after the French Revolution, were influenced by neoclassicism and became a style that was more strict, with influences from Greece or ancient Rome. This style emerged as a reaction to the frivolity and excessive ornamentation of the Baroque and Rococo styles. By 1810, Oberkampf had made Toile a household name not only in France, but throughout Europe and America as well. Our last stop before we arrived at Versailles at the last evening for our trip, we stopped at the Musée de la Toile in Jouy en Josas, and it was a fantastic experience. In front of the, the museum, which is a 19th century uh, Maison de Maître is a beautiful garden that they planted with a lot of fragrant plants like rosemary, lavender, but also plants that bring a lot of color. Very nice, you approach the building, and of course everything in France you have to have the pass sanitaire uh, to get into mm -hmm. any museum, any restaurant uh, where you might take your mask off or where people congregate, so you have to uh, prove that you are vaccinated. And um, so we, we never had a problem because we have the, the French Pass Sanitaire. Um, it, it was 
completely empty. It was devoid of people. We were the right. only we visitors. We were the only visitors there that day, yeah. <laughs> was, well, at yeah. that time. Well, yeah. yes. But yeah. it's, I mean, it was a time, it was fall and COVID and really not great for many institutions. Mm -hmm. One of the first things we saw when we came into the museum was this really cool model of the manufactory. In the model, you can see where they had printed cloth had to be stretched out to dry in the fields surrounding the manufactory. The location for this factory was chosen because it was on uh, the Rivière Bièvre, uh, which had extremely clean, clear water. So. Producing fabrics takes a lot of uh, water for washing and um, it, it also very close to the court of Versailles. Here you see a copper printing plate. Uh, this plate is really, really large. Toile was in very narrow uh, width of cloth uh, in block print. When copper print came in, this plate is about three by three feet. It is a very, very large uh, area that they can print in one go. Uh, it, it revolutionized printing uh, for twelve. This is a floral twelve that um, I particularly like. I love the reds and the greens. And Toile was originally printed not on bleached cotton or linen. It was, ble uh, was printed on uh, natural background. So that why, that's why this is so very soothing. It's a, it's a cream color background. I think this is very, very interesting because it is structured, but it also has a lot of movement in it. This print is called Birds Perched in a Flowering Tree. And uh, it was actually one of my favorites of the floral that they had there. Uh, I really like the detail of the birds and the flowers and that's currently uh, the, some of the toile that I'm designing myself is based on birds and flowers. So I think that's why I like this one so much. It is gorgeous. This toile is called the gardeners and you see a male and a female gardener. I adore this this print it is i love the symmetry of it the birds the flowers um the garden tools it is so pretty this toile is called the offering to love and i suppose who wouldn't like to offer something to love this toile is called the delights of the four seasons which uh, today is still one of the most popular of the Toile designs. And has been since its inception. And it is so beautifully executed. Uh, and of course, it, it always depends on the quality of the print. This in the Musée de, de Toile is a, a stunning example of the, the, the print. This Toile is called The Pleasures of the Country. And you can see hunting, grazing, very idyllic. This is a very, very famous toile. It's called Le Meunier, son fille et l'âne. So, which means the, the miller, his son, and the donkey. And it tells a whole story about the old man is sitting on the father, who is a, an old gentleman, sitting on the donkey. And people say, oh, that poor donkey. Both are walking, uh, people walking next to the donkey, and people are saying, why are you not using your donkey? And then when the son sits on the donkey, how dare you let your father walk? Right, right. You, you can't win in this story. It's basically no matter what they did, they were going to be losers in this story. But it's, you know, it's so joyful and, and it's, it has this humorous undertone. I just, I think it's adorable. This specific toile is very amazing. Uh, I'd love to have this. I have never seen it. It's called the Castles Park. We have looked through the internet, never found it. If anyone has a lead for this, this would be great. Uh, it is such a stunning toile. Love it. In the Musée de Toile, this is the first example that we saw of 
twelve being used in fashion. Really pretty. Now, like every good museum, at the end there's a gift shop and this one was really lovely. Loved it. There is clothing, scarves, uh, china, um, shoes, writing articles. I mean, like anything you can think of, they had a, a toile de jouy version of it. Yes, anything you can print toile on, they had yes. it, including um, napkins, paper napkins, yeah. uh, cloth napkins, uh, lampshades. As Esther said, wh whatever you can imagine that you can print it on, they have it. Yeah. Of course, we had to buy some things too, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna stuff something right in the camera. <laughs> it's, uh, it's this, this is a pile of napkins, and it's called La Brevoire, which is uh, the gardeners who, who make wine. And I thought this was just, I couldn't pass it. So, love that one. Yeah, this is a little uh, notebook with a toile cover on it. Uh, of course, we bought that just in preparation for the owning a chateau so we can put our shopping lists on it. But one's not enough, so, you know, it, a big chateau needs, uh, or any chateau needs a long list, so hence we have another one. Yeah, this is a sketchbook with tall cover. Really pretty. Yeah. And then of course, who could not leave there without the a tote, tote, tote bag? But then of course, one has to flaunt that one was in Jouy. So some might think it's pathetic. I think it's great, so thank you.
Thank you for joining us on our journey through the world of Toile de Jouy. Designs that are still produced after way over 200 years, now it has become a staple and uh, desirable all over Europe and the world. So fantastic uh, design element that has stood the test of time. So we'll see you next time. Bonne journée. Au revoir. Goodbye. Auf Wiedersehen. If you enjoyed this video, please use the like feature to let us know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Journey to the Chateau YouTube channel if you would like to see more. Once you've subscribed, you can tap the notification bell in order to ring it, which will allow you to receive all notifications from our channel. Thank you.